This is another video uh, dealing with the false teaching that non-Israelites can't be saved. And in this video, I'm going to just list a few scriptures which show that non-Israelites will be in the coming kingdom and they will be worshipping the Most High, Yahweh. The first of the scriptures I'd like to look at is in Yeshaya or Isaiah chapter 19, verse 19 and onwards. In that day an altar to Yah shall be in the midst of the land of Misraim or Egypt and a standing column to Yah at its border. It shall be for a sign and a witness to Yah of hosts in the land of Misraim. When they cry out to Yah because of the oppressors he sends them a saviour and a mighty one and shall deliver them. Verse 21 and Yah shall be known to Mizraim, and the Mizraites shall know Yah in that day, and make slaughtering and meal offering, and shall make a vow to Yah and pay it. Verse 22 And Yah shall smite Mizraim, smite it and heal it, and they shall turn to Yah, and he shall hear them and heal them. And in that day they shall be a highway from Mizraim to Ashur or Assyria. And Ashur shall come into Mizraim, and Mizraim into Ashur, and Mizraim shall serve with, with Ashur. And in that day Yisrael shall be a one of three with Mizraim and Ashur, even a blessing in the midst of the earth, whom Yah of hosts will bless, saying, Blessed is Mizraim my people, and Ashur the work of my hands, and Yisrael my inheritance. This is powerful stuff, real powerful stuff. You see that the Most High says here that um, the children of Misraim are going to basically be converted and they're going to worship the Most High Yah. We see that he says that he's going to send them a saviour and a mighty one who we should understand that to be Yehoshua. He's going to come and he's going to actually come and defend Misraim. Uh, verse 21 he says that uh, Yah shall be known to Mizraim, and the Mizraites shall know Yah in that day, and make slaughtering and meal offering. They're going to know the Most High Yah, and they're going to worship the Most High Yah. And then finally, if we scroll down here to verse 25, he, the Most High says, in that day, Yah is going to bless Mizraim, and he's going to say, Blessed is Mizraim, my people. So you see that Yah has got a, a special plan for, the, for Egypt, for Mizraim, which involves them being along with Ashur and Yisrael as a blessing in the midst of the whole earth. I find that really powerful. Another scripture I'd like to go to uh, is the prophet Zechariah. And in chapter 14, he speaks about the day of Yah and about the, the time when Yehoshua is going to come and he's going to return to earth and he's going to defend his people, the children of Israel, from all of the enemies who come against Israel. But then look what he says. The prophet says from verse 16, It shall be that all who are left from all the Gentiles who came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to bow themselves to the sovereign, Yah of hosts, and observe the festival of booths. So you see that Gentiles, non-Israelites, among those nations who came against um, Israel, there's going to be survivors among them and they are going to go up from year to year to worship Yah during the Feast of Tabernacles, during the Feast of Booths. It's clear as, you know, clear as day. Verse 17 It shall be that if any one of the, any one of the clans of the earth does not come up to Jerusalem to, to bow himself to the sovereign Yah of hosts, on them there is to be no rain. So, so the Most High is pretty serious. You know, these nations are going to come to worship the Most High during the kingdom that is to come. If the clan of Misraim does, if the clan of Misraim does not come up and enter in, then there is no rain. One of them, uh, sorry, on them is the plague with with which Yah plagues the Gentiles who do not come up to observe the festival of booths. 
This is the punishment of Mizraim and the punishment of all the Gentiles who do not come up to observe the festival of booths. So you see, very plainly stated there that the non-Israelites are going to be in the kingdom and they're going to be going up to Jerusalem worshipping the Most High Yah during the festival of booths and they are going to be punished if they don't go up during that time to worship the Most High. Very plainly stating that they are going to be non-Israelites who are going to be in the kingdom. Going back to the prophet Yeshaya, he, he says something very profound in chapter 56 of his, his book. And we read this from verse 3. It says, Let not the son of the foreigner, okay, a non-Israelite, let not the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to Yah, i.e. Who, who has come to faith in the Most High, the, the Mighty One of Israel, is being grafted in, as, as Shaul might say, let not this one speak, saying, Yah has certainly separated me from his people. Okay, so he's, saying, he's speaking, this is a word of comfort to the, to the non-Israelites, saying, saying to them, look, do not be, don't be thinking that Yah has separated you from his people. Okay, this is exactly the teaching that many, you know, are teaching today, that non-Israelites are separated from Israelites and they cannot be saved. Yah says, no. He says, nor let the eunuch say, look, I am a dry tree. For thus says Yah to the eunuchs who guard my, my Sabbaths and have chosen what pleases me and hold fast to my covenant. To them I shall give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I give them an everlasting name that is not cut off. You see, the Most High says to these uh, non-Israelites that he's going to give them, the ones who have faith, a better name in 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 his house than that of sons and daughters, i.e. that of those Israelites who don't have faith. These non-Israelites who have faith are going to have an everlasting name that is better than those non, non-faithful Israelites. And then we continue in verse 6. Also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to Yah to serve him, to love the name of Yah, to be his servants, all who guard, the, who guard the Sabbath and not profane it and hold fast to my covenant, them I shall bring to my set apart mountain and let them rejoice in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices are accepted on my altar, for my house is called a house of prayer for all the peoples. You see that? We saw that in the Torah previously, how one of any of the nations can come up to, could come up and, and make an offering. Uh, make a burnt offering and that's what Yah repeats that there he says my house is called a house of prayer for all the peoples verse 8 the master Yah who gathers the outcast of Israel declares I gather still others to him besides those who are gathered to him making it very plain he not only gathers the outcasts of Israel but he also gathers others from among the other nations who are not the children of Israel and this is all going to be fulfilled, of course, in the coming kingdom. Now, one last scripture, real quick. Hopefully, we've got time to look at it. Is uh, Ezekiel chapter 47. This is speaking about how the land is going to be divided in the coming kingdom. And it says, from verse 21, You shall divide this land among yourselves according to the tribes of Israel. And it shall be that, that you divide it by lot as an inheritance for yourselves. And for the strangers who sojourn in your midst and bear children among you, they shall be to you as native born among the children of Israel. With you they have an inheritance in the midst of the tribes of Israel. Verse 23, it shall be that in whatever tribe the, so, the stranger sojourns, there you give him his inheritance, declares the master. Yeah. So the Most High says that the Gentiles, the non-Israelites, in the kingdom, they are going to be they are going to re- the ones who are among the Israelites, they are going to receive an inheritance in the Holy Land, in the Promised Land, the land that was promised to Abraham. And so you see various prophecies in the scriptures make it plain and show us how all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed through the seed of Abraham, Yeshak and Jacob, through the children of Israel, all the other nations are going to be blessed. Salvation will come to those among the people among the nations who have faith 
And um, those non-Israelites who have faith will be in the kingdom, will be worshipping the Most High, and, and some of them are going to receive an inheritance among the children of Israel in the land of the Most High. All of this, once again, refuting the idea that non-Israelites cannot be saved and the idea that non-Israelites will not be in the kingdom.